Photoshop Elements comes with many features to help you share your images with family and friends. And even though we've got a ton of different ways we can share these days, sending photographs by email remains a popular way of doing things. So here inside this exercise, I'll show you how we can choose photos and prepare an email inside the organizer. Before we do that though, we need to ensure that Elements is set up correctly to deal with emails. So come up here to the Edit menu and then come down and select Preferences right at the bottom and we want to go for the Sharing panel so that's what we'll click. When we do that we'll get an Email Settings section where we can choose our default email client that will deliver the mail we're about to send. If we click the Email Client drop down menu we see only two options and I'm afraid that is it. We have Microsoft Outlook which I don't have on my computer but if you have it on yours then go ahead and use it. I definitely recommend selecting it here. If not like me then we'll need to look at this second option which is the Adobe email service. To use it we need to enter our details down here. So I'll go ahead and enter my name and that's a nice easy one for me to start with. And then once I've done that I'm going to enter my email address and this doesn't have to be an Adobe one or anything like that. It just needs to be a functioning live email address that you're already using. So I'm going to enter my email address, which is matt at 3photoshop.com. There we go. And that's all we need. So once we've done that, we'll click OK. Now let's start for real by choosing which image first of all that we want to email out and you know what I'm gonna choose this greeting card that we created earlier in the chapter so we'll select it and then we'll come over to the share menu and we'll give that a click and then we'll come down to the email attachments option and click that also thanks to us having that image selected it gets imported straight away inside the attachments section OK, the next option we get is currently active and that's asking if we want to convert the file to JPEG before sending. If we're using JPEGs, then this option will be dimmed and unavailable. But for this particular purpose and this particular image, it's not only available, but it's going to prove extremely useful. The reason for that is that if you were to send out the image as we saved it into that PSE file format, that you'll remember a few videos ago, then we'll end up sending the file to someone that may not be able to open it. They would need a program on their computer that supported and opened the PSE file format. And I have to be honest, I don't know of too many programs out there that do that besides Photoshop Elements. So if you want to make it easy for the person that's going to receive the mail to see the photograph, then I definitely recommend having that JPEG option turned on. Now, if we're sending as a JPEG, we next have to stipulate the dimensions of the image we're sending. Often when you import images from a digital camera, you're going to end up with extremely large files, and that's potentially going to cause issues if you're sending 10 or 20 photographs. So this next feature allows us to reduce the size to something more appropriate for screen display. We can use the original dimensions if we like, but I'd recommend going for big or very big if we just want someone at the other end to see the photograph. Now. Now I'm working with a very small screen capture area so I'm going to select medium and then we need to select a quality for the conversion to JPEG and I'd usually recommend going for something between 10 and 12 say and because I'm sending such a small image here and I'm only sending one don't forget I'll push this all the way up to 12 to get the very best out of our photograph. We can see down here that the estimated file size that we will be attaching to our email is uh, still very reasonable and by no means going to cause us any problems with sending. Personally I very rarely go for a compression setting lower than 9 because I'm a firm believer that file size is less important than the actual quality of the image. So in other words I'd rather have somebody waiting a few more seconds to download the file than I would end up scrunching all of the 
compression into the image and ended up with it looking quite poor. The next thing we need to do is actually select a recipient for the email and as you can see here we don't currently have anyone in our address book so I'll click this little icon to the right and we're now able to add one. As you can see we can either import an address book from Microsoft Outlook or via a V card which is a little bit more accessible for other programs and applications or we can cancel out of here and then just add an address manually by clicking on new contacts. From here we can go ahead and add as much information about that person as we want so I'll go ahead and enter my details. Matt is the first name of course and then Whiting is my surname and then I'll enter my email address of matt at freephotoshop.com which by the way is my real email address. I'm then going to click OK and we've added me as a contact. Now click OK once again because we're through adding contacts and then make sure I'm ticked in the recipients and once we're happy we can go ahead and click next. When we do that Elements will check which email program we have set up as our default so it's going to look at that preference setting we set up a little bit earlier in this video and for me it's going to see that I'm using Adobe email. So then I'm going to go ahead and read it's then going to go ahead and read my details and send an email to the address I'm using because it needs to make sure I'm human and not a robot fixing to send spam. So if we check the email account that we registered we should have a verification code sent through to us. So I'm just going to switch over to the email I received and then I'll copy the code and once I've done that I'll come back over to elements and then I'll go ahead and paste it into the sender verification field by pressing control or command V like so. I'll then submit that code and if all is well and I've copied it accurately we'll get this message telling us that we've been verified and we're now ready to send mail. So I'll click OK to continue. It's important to note that we don't need to go through this verification process every time we send mail. Instead, we do it just once for the addition of each new email address and then never again. Elements has now created the mail using its own email client. So I'll go ahead and make sure that I'm able to see all of that. So I'll go ahead and make sure that I can see all of that. And once I can, I'd say things are looking good. We can change any of these fields if we want to, but I'm quite happy. So I'll just come up here to the file menu and I'll select the send message option like so. The email will then be sent using the email address we entered into the preferences options earlier. So it will appear to the receiver of the mail that we sent it using our normal email software, whether that's Outlook Express, whether that's Yahoo Mail, Google Gmail or anything like that that's where the recipient will think that we've sent the mail from. So that's a really good touch, I'd say, from Photoshop. Well, it looks like we're all done. Once again, we have successfully sent an email using Photoshop Elements. Next up, we're going to conclude this chapter with a look at uploading photographs to our Facebook account. I'll see you in the next video.